Good evening and welcome to the fifth German Arab Women's Forum. You, thank you so much for joining us from wherever you are across the screen, doing this virtually for the first time. This German Arab Women's Forum is doing it virtually, obviously under these circumstances. Very happy to be kicking off January with this conference that has an incredible lineup for you today. Um, my name is Yumna Naufal. I will be your master of ceremony as well as the moderator for today's session and tomorrow's session, specifically the discussions we were going to have with our esteemed guests. Um, you just saw a video of this year's WESAL participants. This is a very important project that is dear to Emma. Emma is a regional association, just to remind you, for German business people and entrepreneurs engaged in fostering cooperation and international understanding between Germany, Europe, the Mediterranean, and the Middle East region. And it connects economic, political, and academic decision makers from a variety of countries and industries and sectors. So this makes the Emma an excellent platform for mutual exchange, and it's also, a, it becomes a reliable interlocutor for the region. It is the first and unique platform for international dialogue between women from Germany and the Arab world, and thus has become the contact for the cooperation of female entrepreneurs and business leaders, especially thanks to the award-winning German Arab mentoring project, WISAL. So I wanna tell you a little bit about WISAL. Um, some of you may be familiar with it, but for those who may just be tuning in for the first time. In Arabic, wisal means link or bridge. So it reflects the goal of a project where you connect people together, right? You're bridging these gaps through intercultural exchange. And within this project, women from Germany, Tunisia, Morocco, and hopefully in the future, also women from other countries work together with mentors and mentees in tandem to develop business for the mentees. And if you've ever worked on anything in the industries that we're working in today, especially in this millennial world that we're living in, you understand the importance of mentorship. Um, the Emma has built and expanded WESAL throughout many years and hopes to continue to do so. Special thanks go to the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, which is supportive of this event as well as the WESAL project. So we're here today to discuss the importance of dialogue, networking, finding motivation and support with the help of Emma to foster a valuable German Arab women's network, especially in these times of crisis. Um, coming from a personal, personal point of view here, um, when we talk about Lebanon, I know the Arab region suffers greatly on so many levels, unemployment for the youth, unemployment for women being one of the highest, if not the highest percentage in the world, but also just a region that is very much in need of dialogue and conversation. Um, the, uh, the mission of Emma and the plight of women in the region is something that's very dear to me. Uh, we live in a region that is still very much plagued with gap and discrimination and platforms such as these allow us to start bridging these gaps and to start a conversation that will even go beyond what we start today and tomorrow. I would like to introduce you uh, to a woman who is very much responsible for this event today. Um, Clara Grutroy, Ms. Clara Grutroy is the Secretary General of the Euro Mediterranean Arab Association, known as Emma. She has significantly built and shaped the organization. While it's headquartered in Berlin, it's engaged in fostering economic cooperation, as I said, between Germany and the Middle Eastern world. The award winning project WISAL, which promotes female startups in North Africa, is just one example of Clara's innovative and hands on mentality as is the initiation of the German Arab Digital Forum and many regional conferences and projects to promote cooperation among countries, businesses, and societies. Clara received the German Land of Ideas Prize for the WISAL program in 2016. And that's just one of the many accolades that she holds. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome to the stage. And I call it stage because even though we're virtual and one day hopefully we'll all meet again very soon, Miss Clara Grutroy, Please come on in. Hello, good evening, Yomna. 
Thank you so much for this kind introduction. Shall I say uh, a few words more? Yeah, I want you to say a few words. But so the way I like to do this, and I always tell people is, as opposed to speeches, I find it more interesting for it to be interactive. Clara, you know, you've, you've been working on this for over 10 years. Not the Wissal project, specifically eight, but just Emma and also um, this forum being created, you know, the fifth this year. What does it mean to you when you look back at where it started and where it is today? Well, uh, this is a good question. Um, first of all, please allow me just not to forget to say thank you to so many people. First of all, the audience which is here today and which is uh, also with us in this experiment of this feed loop platform. I really hope that everything works perfectly now for you. Sorry also for a short delay of, of start getting started. But uh, since we are very inno innovative and we want the best for you, uh, we try the best. And yes, so looking forward to spending the Friday night together and also tomorrow morning. And um, yes, um, thank you to the audience. I said this already, but I also want and really want to thank my team, which has been wonderful uh, the last years, but especially also during the Christmas and New Year's break to, to getting yeah everything set up uh, for tonight. So thank you very much. You are based in Bangladesh, Egypt, Lebanon. Tunisia, Morocco, Germany, France, I don't know where else, but we are really working uh, remotely and internationally, and it's just a pleasure to work with you. I also, Jumna, you said already thank you to our federal ministry, but I mm -hmm. really would like to do it as well. And so the tension may also be a little bit um, higher about my reply. <laughs> it's okay. our federal ministry for economic uh, cooperation and development, which has uh, been support supporting us for the past years and uh, which is also supporting us for, for tonight and tomorrow. So thank you very much. And I really hope that uh, Mrs. Kaiser will join us uh, on stage shortly or tomorrow. Let's see. And yeah, last but not least, we have uh, interpreters, we have technicians, we have you, Yumna, as moderator and all the speakers who join us uh, tonight. It's a uh, weekend in Germany, at least. So um, thank you. I really appreciate it. Now, coming back to your question. Um, yeah. When I decided uh, to, to join the EMA, it was just founded um, by uh, Dr. Layadi in Hamburg and several other, other yeah, re renowned uh, people in Germany. And I was 26 years old and uh, just started my career. So I really didn't know what I uh, was about to, to build up. Now, uh, looking back, I would say it's good that I was a little bit innocent in that way, because building up an international organization like this, it really is a lot of effort. And um, especially our Arab German Women's Netform, Network, I would say, is um, something that makes us really special because, uh, yeah, any uh, conference that we that we have, I would say we have at least a 50 percent female participation, be it on uh, hydrogen energy or on logistics or anything else. And this is what really makes us uh, special and uh, the mentoring program. You could just see it in the film. I mean, um, yeah. women working together like this and this for years creates really a reli reliable and strong network. And um, this is what it's all about. We are role models and uh, we are working together across the MENA region. And that's, you know, and it's, you know, I love that you said that, you know, it's been a it's, it's been a work in progress. And you also have seen, we saw in what it's done to these women. But specifically, before we get into the Mediterranean dialogue and to introduce our other esteemed guests, why is it important to you? Why was it important to you? Well, you must know that um, when we started our work, it was right before the so-called Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. We have had in Germany a lot of discussion on the national, on the, on the national level, let's say, about the the quota of, of women in leadership position. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew from North Africa, namely, that there has been a lot 
a lot of quota in, in different public and also private entities. And um, we could learn so much from, from there. And I, I didn't really understand what it was about in Germany. So uh, together with the Chamber of Commerce in Hamburg, we decided to host a first um, Arab German Networks Forum. Maybe some of you remember we were about, uh, yes, 100 uh, women and discussing on such things. And after that, we just decided it's good to talk to each other and it's good mm. to, to get to know ourselves, but we need some some more concrete and uh, therefore the mentoring project has been initiated and we were thinking hard of how we can really build bridges and and bring some, yeah, some new concept in, into our work. And, and, and some new concepts you did bring along and I, you know, we're going to get more into detail about this, but um, without further ado, I want us to start this conversation. Our first conversation today is titled the Mediterranean dialogue. When we talk about dialogue, we speak about women's empowerment, right? The specific situation they're in, in the Mediterranean, in the Middle East region, years after the beginning of the Arab spring, 10 years, actually, um, I believe this month on the 14th of January, if my history lesson serves me right. Um, and 10 years later, still we have ways, ways to go. Um, women in this region still struggle to make an impact. And sometimes the most of the time, the political and the circumstances that they live in don't really help them or push them. So it is these kinds of cooperation, international cooperations where women come together across continents, across borders, and have this dialogue, and hopefully are able to bridge the gap. We keep saying bridging the gap, and I'm sorry if it's redundant, but that's what we sell is. We're just trying to bring you all together today. Um, just to give you a quick, a quick few uh, numbers here, the so-called Arab Spring started 10 years ago. And from there, it spread across North Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. To different levels. Women were met with new opportunities and they met new challenges. But I think the biggest challenge today is for women, and this is said everywhere, for women to feel like she has a place, for her to feel like she can prosper, she has to be able to work. Women make up 50% of the population and you need that 50% to lift up the economy, an economy that is pretty much in shatters today all over the world, also specifically in the Arab world. One of the most important challenges is the high youth unemployment rate among young women. In Arab countries, it is the highest worldwide. According to the International Labor Organization, 26.9% of 15 to 24 year olds are unemployed. Young women almost double that figure. So, Wisal is doing groundbreaking work supporting these female founders and startup entrepreneurs in these Arab countries. And today I want to introduce you to another guest of ours who is going to also shed light on this issue, Ms. Hasiba Sayeh, the country representative of UNIDO in Algeria. Ms. Sayeh holds a post-graduation degree in agroeconomy and rural development. Before this, she devoted herself to a career conducting studies and expertise as a manager of research and consulting since 2010 in collaboration with national and international institution in programs dedicated to support private sector development and institutional consolidation. Ms. Saya, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, you very much in Omnia for this introduction. <laughs> Thank you. No, thank you for, for being here. You know, you've been listening to Clara and us talking yeah. about the situation mm -hmm. in the Arab world, the last 10 years, all culminating to this today, where we are today, um, kicking off 2021. Um, mm -hmm. How do you see the situation? Let's talk in general, and then we'll talk specifically about um, countries. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> in general, uh, the actually the the, the pandemic uh, the pandemic um, um, sharpened the, the, the economic and the the, the, the economic uh, situation that was 
already challenging uh, in in the world and uh, changed the 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 run issues uh, the run issues into the medium run issues into uh, short run ones uh, and uh, in, in Algeria in recent years the Algerian economy uh, has benefited from uh, massive uh, public investment thanks uh, to uh, hydrocarbon revenues uh, which has uh, allowed the consolidation and the densification of the infrastructure network and uh, increase uh, the absorption capacity of the economy to achieve uh, sustained uh, growth. Uh, moreover, with the regard to hum human uh, development, Algeria has joined uh, the category of uh, high human development. Um. Clara, I just wanted to I just wanted to ask you because um, Ms. Hasiba Sayeh was saying something. She was saying about how this pandemic, and you know, we can't talk about 2021 and reflect on the past year and talk about crisis without mentioning this pandemic, which really economically has brought the world to its knees. And it's interesting because March 8 is International Women's Day, and UN Women this year has as a motto. Women in leadership achieving an equal future in a COVID-19 world. So can you tell me through your work, Clara, what have you been able to see or what have you seen that you feel has impacted women across the two countries two during countries, this crisis? Or, during yeah, this crisis. The, the whole region. What, what I really, really appreciated in the past year was uh, that in our WISARS program, for instance, we had have really been even closer in touch than uh, we had the intention to be. Of course, uh, borders have been closed for a long while. Um, we cannot host the forum today in Berlin, and we are really sad about it. But what we did was um, to meet uh, continuously and uh, to have uh, even more uh, online seminars and to teach our each other every knowledge and expertise that we may have. And it's so important, I guess, um, for everyone and has been important to to have counterparts uh, to share your thoughts, because uh, all the initial plans that we have had, uh, we couldn't fulfill them in our work. Uh, I can tell myself from the email, we, mm. we were supposed to travel to Tunisia, to Jordan, to to many countries and um, everything was on, on is on hold. We are even are facing now the hard lockdown in Germany and uh, this morning I had to teach four children uh, in online homeschooling and preparing oh. the forum at the same time. So, um, yeah, I believe uh, we can all be happy to, to be safe and, and, and healthy, but uh, economically it's really uh, a hard challenge. And I feel that the women of our network are really strong and resilient. I mean, um, there will be, of, and there is disruption from this COVID and my just since I'm a positive <laughs> thinking person, my hope would be that we even can accelerate change and innovation in the future. I mean, it, it's, it sounds maybe a little bit um, simple, simplistic and, and yeah, too, too simple, but um, this is my hope because um, already you were mentioning, Yumna, the, the so-called Arab Spring and 10 years after we can still see there's a lot of problems. I mean, I wish we could, um, also work close, more close with uh, Libya, with uh, Syria, Yemen, Iraq. It's really sad uh, what what we what we experience uh, in yeah in these countries and even more. But um, also there has been a lot uh, been done, uh, especially in Tunisia. Let's say. Um, so let's take things from the bright side and mm. um, use all these opportunities. We have had in, in Germany this year, um, Germany was the host of the European Council and mm -hmm. um, we wanted to work, uh, this should, should have been the uh, German African year or Europe Africa year. The pandemic has a little bit um, yeah, changed our uh, interests and, and uh, the whole thing. But still, there is a lot of interest of having regional collaboration to talk also about this Mediterranean dialogue uh, of tonight. And uh, I fear that we really should um, 
seize the opportunity again to have also Ursula von der Leyen as our uh, Commission's president and who wants to have gender equality as one of the main principles of, of, of her, her work and uh, second also to have uh, sustainability and um, greening the economy and this is just my hope that uh, women from both shores of the Mediterranean may contribute uh, a maximum and I feel that Hasiba uh, from Algeria, she's uh, also the perfect person because she's working on uh, sustainability for many, many years. Uh, we know each other from, from this field. Now you work uh, with UNIDO on, on also creating uh, job op op opportunities in the whole region. And um, this is something we should tackle all together. Yeah, you know, and, and, ha and Miss Saya, you know, Clara was just saying that the last year, you know, she tried to look at the positive side of things, even though, mm -hmm. you know, the pandemic has obviously, I don't want to say blocked, but maybe hindered many projects. And yet yeah. here we are, and we're still trying to make things happen. For you specifically, you know, how did women, especially female entrepreneurs in Algeria, experience the last year? Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, for this question. Uh, we do know uh, that in general, uh, small and medium enterprises are the most impacted uh, by the economic uh, turmoil. And within this category, with, uh, women are facing more challenges, economic and social wise. Mm. Uh, UNIDO was among the first organizations to hold a global survey uh, to rapidly assess uh, the impact of COVID-19 on uh, this category, uh, but managed by uh, female and uh, young uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, the global report as well as the particular uh, to Algeria are available and I can share them with you later. The survey report uh, revealed that uh, uh, COVID-19 epidemic has serious repercussions on the continuity of the activity of companies from April uh, 2020 in Nigeria. The majority of the companies questioned declared a temporary suspension of their activity. Overall market losses, liquidity shortages, and supply difficulties were the main challenges caused by the COVID crisis. In short, mm -hmm women have to face the same challenges that then men in the economy plus some specific ones due to their gender you know it's, it's yeah i hear you say this and then it reminds me a little bit of what's of what's going here you know mm -hmm. women women have to deal with not only the economic crisis and the political situation and obviously socially also impact because they all impact the social, but also this idea that sometimes resources are limited for them in the in the Arab world. How do you ensure that they are equipped with the right resources, Miss Saya? Uh, in which, uh, in which, uh, what do you when mean? It comes, when it comes to when it comes to mentoring them, when it comes to connecting them with the right people. Okay, okay. Uh, you need to, as the United Nations specialized mm -hmm. uh, and agency mandated to uh, promote and accelerate uh, an inclusive and uh, sustainable industrial development. Uh, has conducted directly many projects uh, dealing with uh, women entrepreneurship uh, with positive output, outcome, and uh, even impact, especially in the industrial area, uh, which is the shorter way to uh, diversify the economy and foster local development, bring, bridging thus the regional uh, discrepancy uh, gaps. Moreover, as the president of the Economic Diversification Result Group within the uh, UN country team, you need to lead the other UN agency, uh, agencies into common projects and activities aiming uh, uh, at empowering, empowering women entrepreneurs fully in line uh, with the new UN reform and uh, showing the to the partners and the stakeholders an integrated uh, approach yep you know you hear 
you hear um, Miss Hasiba Sayeh talking and you hear her talking about, you know, female entrepreneurs in the Arab world and what she saw happening in Algeria. But, you know, during your many years of work and in your own experience with German and Arab female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and women associations in general, what differences and what similarities between German and Arab women did you notice? Okay, I mean, we shouldn't, um, it, it's needless to say that uh, we have a lot of similarities and uh, that it's we have so much uh, of a common ground. Uh, still, what I would say, what I really experienced in the past years and uh, even figures show it that um, there's a lot more women in North Africa willing and and uh, yeah building up their startups. So female founders in Germany are still. Uh, I don't know why it is the case, but uh, I wish we would learn much more from those brave, brave women in, in North Africa, and that we had more women in Germany as well being female founders and. Same as uh, for women in MINT. Uh, there's a lot of more women studying uh, MINT and, and working as engineers and uh, in the IT uh, than in Germany. And uh, this is an observation I've made in the past years. I can see this is Kaiser. This is a nice thing. <laughs> well, uh, this is maybe a, a, a difference. Um, yeah, talking about, I, I, I was talking about many positive things. What I sometimes regret is, of course, of, from a legal perspective, uh, there can be a lot uh, more to be done for gender equality when it comes to uh, succession law or some some things like this. But tomorrow we will host um, Her Excellency Nusa Scali from Morocco, who namely shaped uh, a lot of legal reforms in, in Morocco. Many of you may know her already because she is joining every forum uh, since the past years. And um, I wish just that we or yeah, that women also will have equal opportunities. Um, but this is something that is yeah everywhere in the world. But namely, of course, in some of the countries of the MENA region. Yeah, and, and you know, um, it's, it's interesting. I just want to remind our audience that after this session is done, we do have, and this is the whole, one of the biggest goals of this forum, is we do have this virtual networking that is possible. On the left-hand side of your screen, you will find a tab that says networking. So I invite you, please, to go in, get in touch with any of our speakers. You can chat with them, you can video call them, you can exchange your WhatsApps. This is very 2021. And then please continue this conversation. But getting back to what uh, both you ladies were saying, you know, I feel it um, similarly here. You know, Lebanon went through one of the hardest years in recent history, if not in all of its history. Um, a revolution that was started in 2019. We got a revolution a little later than the Arab Spring. We were like nine years later. Um, kind of really put the country on its knees economically because the local currency lost 60% of its value. So that's, that you know, and, and people were already facing unemployment, you know, unemployment rates were going, were skyrocketing, and then things got a little bit more difficult. Uh, People were no longer allowed to touch their dollars in the in the banks. We now have something called lollars, which is something we make, we make fun of people about. We make fun of our government about. But what's really um, what really brought on the biggest crisis is on August fourth of last year, Lebanon experienced one of the biggest non nuclear explosions in the history of explosions that left a quarter of a million people displaced. So when you put that together with the pandemic and then, you know, this explosion that left Beirut, the capital shattered, um, what was interesting to see, and I don't say this lightly, is that it was civil society and women leading initiatives on the ground, NGOs such as these ones to try to piece back together the country. And I really mean it, piece it literally and figuratively. And I think um, 
what it says about women in the Arab world, because I know that's not just for Lebanon. You see it all over. You see it in Egypt and in Jordan and Tunisia and Morocco. Um, you see it, you're seeing it now more in countries where um, maybe there are repressed societies and women are really taking the lead in so many ways. Um, that when you give a woman a hand, when you um, allow her to flourish or to make an impact, she does. And I think that's really what it what it says about, you know, the goal and the mission of this forum and just networking in general and the motivation that we all need and the encouragement that we all need. Um, we we are joined by a guest uh, that I'd like to introduce to you. Welcome, Miss Kaiser. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can, yes, I can hear you. I had difficult. I had check it. Tef technical difficulties to join so oh, very, it's, very it's sorry. okay no thank you for joining first of all you know we want to apologize but our audience knows this welcome to 2021 and the yeah. the world of virtual technical problems okay uh, yes yes um, yes indeed i don't know about you miss kaiser but i always tell them people who think zoom is more fun than the real world they don't know what they're talking about um yes indeed it's, it's never the same. Um, just to quickly introduce you, Ms. Kaiser is the head of section North Africa Mediterranean Policy at the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, she studied Islamic studies and history in Berlin, Lyon in France, and Damascus in Syria before beginning her career in the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, where she actually held different posts as desk officer for Yemen and later for crisis prevention. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for inviting me and, and congratulations. I'm quite impressed by, by the high level of participation and so uh, and, and, and this network. Uh, I, I followed, I, I, could, I could hear you, but I had difficulties to join in. So I also, I, I'm, uh, I saw the chat and all these messages and, and really I'm impressed by, by, um, uh, by this broad uh, network of so many active uh, business women and entrepreneurs from all over the region, but um, we, it's late already. I don't know if you if you are interested to to hear more about about. I want to I want to ask you a few um, questions if you yeah, permit us. We okay, want to ask okay. you a few questions. We're very happy you joined us. I just I just uh, want to say, Miss Kaiser. Um, no, thank you very much. And then at the same time, you know, you're an expert on, you've worked on crisis prevention. So you, you're you very aware of the, the challenges that have happened in the last year. Um, what do you see as potential for 2021? Yeah, well- Going um, into this new year. At, at, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we are dealing with quite different countries when we look to the region. And of course we have many countries in conflict um, like, like Libya or Syria. Um, but when answering your question, I would focus more on um, on potentials that we see in the region. And one of the main potentials we see is indeed in renewable energies, mm -hmm. um, because the region bears a lot of potential for, for renewables, wind, solar energy, and also green hydrogen. And we are working closely with, uh, with governments, but also um, uh, the private sector in the region um, to, to build up uh, production for the local market, but we also see uh, a huge potential for export in the future. And this could be um, a real partnership between the region and Europe and, and a win-win situation for the future. So this is one of the, of the potentials. I also see a lot of potential in, um, in the region as, as a bridge between Europe and Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, for example, digitalization. This we we are, we are um, currently working with different partners um, on on creating a hub in North Africa. Tunisia is a very good example, where we have a lot of um, startups founders um, working in 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 this this area, um, building up a, a hub for digitalization, also a bridge between Europe um, for investors who then later on would would move to, to sub-Saharan Africa. So this would be maybe two ideas um, for, for this year. And of course, we all together have to overcome the, the COVID crisis. Unfortunately, this is not only 
um, uh, a health crisis, but also has developed into a real um, economic crisis, of course, for, for many countries. Um, and uh, this will be, of course, the main challenge for this year, unfortunately. <laughs> it's, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because I'm reading the chats of our attendees and most of them say, I hope we can all meet live again. Um, this COVID has really uh, made things difficult, but, and I like it because Clara said this, if you focus on the positive and you focus on what you can do, um, like having this conference and really having these conversations, even from the comfort of our own homes, it's still a big deal. Um, just uh, Ms. Kaiser, I'm just really interested because you're also, you know, you were talking about potential and I know you're also an expert on Africa and the German government identified Africa as a continent of opportunities. Um, one of the important focus of the German Economic and Development Cooperation is the creation of job opportunities. So in your opinion, what do female founders and entrepreneurs contribute to job creation? They contribute a lot. And, and this is a question not only f uh, that for the region, but for, for all of us. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's a question also for Germany. I don't know if you are aware that uh, currently we are discussing on how to increase women's parties, uh, women's representation in, in, in high level positions in the private sector in Germany. And, um, and we know from, from experience and, and research that um, um, staff um, diversity in, in companies and teams um, uh, which are composed of women and men equally um, enhance uh, the productivity and, and cre creative ideas and in, in the end contributes uh, substantially to economic development. And this of, of course is, is valid uh, also for the region. Um, I, I think uh, at the beginning of, of, of the panel you already mentioned some, some figures. Of course we have special challenges um, in the MENA region. We have um, a huge percentage of, of young uh, women, especially academics, um, um, unemployed um, we have a better rates now in, in, in education, but still I think 50% uh, of, of the young um, uh, women, um, well-educated women are, are not working. So this is a, a huge challenge. Um, but I think in general we are all in the same, uh, in the same boat and when, when we are saying that we need more female founders and entrepreneurs um, who can then also be a role model, and this is what I, I uh, understood also from your uh, discussion and from the chat. We need role models for young for young women in in the region, and um, so that um, these uh, these female entrepreneurs um, can um, can can use also their influence. Um, to, to make women's uh, voices heard, not only in, in the economy, also in politics, of course. So um, it's also a question of, of multiplication. And um, in this regard, I think uh, WESAL is, is a very, very good example. We need more um, networks um, uh, to, to also as, as, as an influencing factor in politics. And I, you know, and I, and I, and I love that you say that because I think when you mention politics, especially you're talking about decision making, right? So really, women exactly at the highest level of decision making. Um, Clara Hasiba or Annette, you know, um, we saw this about mentoring and mentees, and I love that Annette Kaiser mentioned the importance of having role models, right, in today's world, because you want to aspire towards something. And, you know, if one woman opens the door, then it doesn't feel, or breaks the glass ceiling, let's use Hillary Clinton's quote, then it feels easier for other women. Um, what do you think, what do you think, or what have you seen with the WESAL program? What do you think the best role model adjectives or qualities have been? I'm curious before I ask you for your advice to younger women? It's an open question. Whoever wants to take it. Well, for me, it's it's so hard to, to answer uh, right away. I would have many ideas on this, but what is particularly important for me is that we have this really a uh, reliable network and we are so trustful and I could reach out 
I would say to any participant of the program, ne nevertheless, which year it was, if it was in 2013 or uh, last year, and I could ask her a favor and I would get it. And I think this would be the same for anyone uh, of the network. Maybe you can confirm in the chat or write your own uh, ideas, contributions and adjectives, please. Because there's so much to say. Wissal means more than bridge in Arabic, by the way. Um, each and it's everyone. Connected. It's connecting. It's, no, uh, it's in French. Uh, people say lien dans la continuation. There's so much poetry in this word uh, that I cannot even get as German. But this is what whistle is for me a very personal and emotional thing as well. So it's more. It's we are role models. It's very professional. It's it's like a business network, but there's also friendship and love, let's say. So this is for me, my feedback. Yeah, well, but you know, Clara, if I can jump in, uh, this is, I like this very much because what I also wanted to say is, and I think we need a new vision for our um, partnership between Europe and the Southern neighborhood. And we currently have a lot of discussions uh, within the European Union. And I think, um, think, really talking about partnership but also friendship and understanding because we have to maybe to to think more about the mediterranean as a, a common cultural um sphere like like it was throughout history and and as we said talking more about our joint um, joint ideas and and potential than than talking about risks all the time so um, maybe Wissal is, is, is a very good example for, for this spirit of, of friendship and, and understanding. And in this, you know, it's, I, you can't say stuff, things like that and not get emotional about it because that's when she, we know when Clara says it's a mo, you know, it's personal. The, you know, achievements and impact is made because having women be part of such initiatives is personal. It's a personal thing. You know, Hasiba, Saif, you are in the region. You've seen the ups and downs more, I don't want to say more than Europe maybe, but on a different scale in the last 10 years because specifically of the Arab Spring and the conflict that mm -hmm. the Middle Easterns are so known for. We make headlines for all the wrong reasons. Um, what do you think young women need to look for in role models, in mentors? What do we need in this part of the world? Mm. Well, very <laughs> difficult question. Uh, in the same time, uh, it's a uh, it's very important question. Uh, what, uh, what young women uh, are expecting from uh, their uh, senior uh, they are they are expecting uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, uh, to have demonstrations uh, mm -hmm. to have uh, someone that uh, have succeeded and uh, uh, someone that uh, open uh, the door for for them uh, not someone uh, to have uh, succeeded and uh, close the door it's uh, it's uh, very important. Uh, when uh, a, a woman uh, succeed uh, to uh, uh, take with her uh, uh, and to to um, uh, how to, to to say it in French, we uh, say parrainé, uh, uh, sponsor or uh, uh, take her under uh, take, take to take under her wing to to uh, lead the way to sorry. encourage yes. Absolutely, uh, young women, and uh, to show uh, them uh, uh, the, the the way, and uh, it is very very important. I want to end because we're running out of time. Just before we end, with one last question for our ladies, um, please. I want to remind our audience: it's Friday night, TGIF for everybody watching, and you can spend TGIF networking. Please, I invite you all to go to the networking tab and make sure you reach out to any of our speakers. Feel free to ask for their contacts. Please, the conversation will continue tomorrow morning, but please feel free this evening to also reach out, to connect. You can video call, you can chat. Uh, there's one-on-one, -on -one, there are different groups. 
um, go into the networking tab and connect and converse. But on this last note, I just want to ask our speakers, and this is an open question as well, is what advice would you give to young women? I want to say in the region, but also in Europe, just young women who are aspiring entrepreneurs um, after having really been through the hardest year, but also maybe found opportunities in this virtual world with the pandemic. What is your advice to them? Um, Ms. Kaiser, do you want to start and then we'll go around? Well, you know, I'm working for the government. <laughs> well, <laughs> so um, um, this is, so to say, a little bit another, another world. But I would indeed say um, try to get strong networks. Um, this is what I think our our male uh, colleagues are doing uh, since a long time, and I think networks are crucial for for careers, and also not only careers but um, for projects. And um, this is why I, I think Wissal is is really a good um, start. And um, there are other possibilities to, to, to create networks, but I think this is a very crucial point for, for women in, in Germany, but, uh, but all over the world, also in the region. All right, thank you. Hasiba, what advice would you give young women? For me, yes, it is network, definitely network, uh, to develop networking and uh, to read, to learn, and uh, to uh, uh, to learn languages, and uh, it is a very very uh, good key uh, to uh, to be uh, at the international level. Um, to be informed, uh, informed. To, uh, yes, information is very good, and uh, this uh, economic intelligence is very very uh, uh, useful to. Uh, to access uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to another level. Thank you. To be informed, to network. Clara, other than networking, other I know it's a big one, and to be informed, <laughs> what is your advice to young women? I this think, is a personal mm -hmm. project for you. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's important not to look for perfection. We all want to be perfect, and I think it's lifelong mm -hmm learning and the world is always in constant change so we should be really curious to 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 learning and um yeah and nobody's perfect you know so it's uh, this imperfection that makes us so great and if we reach out for help with a mentor if it's male if he's male or if she's female but we should be more yeah willing to ask for support and and to share I like that one. I like willing to ask because I think a lot of people would be able to capitalize on time and energy if they just asked the question, not to be afraid to ask for help. Ladies, thank you so much. There are lots of people in the chat asking. A lot of people want to ask you about renewable energy, Ms. Kaiser. And then um, please feel free to go to the networking tab and network with our audience. Um, there are also different questions. Um, do, do we have time for a question, ladies? I know your time. Do we have time for a question from the audience? This is yes, for please. Ms. Kaiser. Um, you mentioned that BMZ wants to focus on renewable energy and on digitalization. What are your plans to recover tourism in the region, especially in a sustainable way? This is from Tur Yvonne Jean. Yes. Tourism? Mm -hmm. To okay. recover tourism yeah. in the region. Yeah, yeah. tourism is, is also, of course, a very important um, issue for us as, as we are focusing on, on job creation. Um, and especially in Tunisia, um, uh, tourism is, of course, a big issue. And we have a quite uh, a big uh, project together with the European uh, Union on sustainable tourism in Tunisia. But... And I think I'm talking a lot about Tunisia because I was based at the embassy mm -hmm. um, until uh, um, uh, 2019. So I know Tunisia best. And there is a lot, a lot of potential. There are young founders. There are people who have um, opened uh, small guest houses. Um, there are a lot of ideas for alternative sustainable tourism because, um, as you may know, Tunisia is still focusing a lot on, on the classical uh, beach and sun um, tourism. And um, so 
I think we really need to develop these uh, these um, more sustainable approaches. Um, but of course, our partners have to decide on on, on their strategies, and this is always a uh, key. Um, other countries in the region, Egypt, I'm not really working on Egypt. I think Egypt, mm. Egypt has um, a little bit the same problem. Um, I think the main question is really how to um, to foster um, a better, a more um, better quality uh, tourism, uh, cultural tourism, um, and and uh, tourism that uh, uh, for for also for local people that local people can profit from from tourism and. Um, also, cultural tourism is a big issue, and, and I, I can only say that we we, we are um, supporting um, these approaches. But but of course, we need good ideas uh, from the private sector, from from the governments in, in the region. And that's what's important. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for being here on a Friday night, and for your contribution and sharing your stories. This is obviously it's a conversation that will keep going even after. Uh, this evening and please welcoming again our audience to network and tomorrow we will see you again early on to continue this agenda thank you so much i'm yumna nopal we're checking out of here um we're i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to the networking account see who we're gonna meet there thank you exactly. Clara. thank you annette and thank, thank you, you all thank bye you Thank you. Best. And see you tomorrow at 10. We will have a great music live session then. So <laughs> please join tomorrow at 10 and let's meet in the networking rooms. All right.